Hi everyone, my name is Irene and welcome to Theo and Olaf. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics and that is pet food. Now you're here probably because you also care about pet food and your pet's health. There's so much to talk about on this subject, so we're actually going to start a series on pet food. We'll talk about the ingredients that go into pet food and what we consider to be the best type of pet food. So if you like this content, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. So if you walk into a pet store, you'll probably be overwhelmed by a number of options when it comes to pet food. You'll probably see labels like all natural, grain free, and you probably think that there's a handful of healthy options out there. When we first got Theo, we also thought the same thing. We just figured, hey, these snacks look cute and great. They're probably great for our cat. Well, I'm gonna tell you something that might shock you. Most pet food options out there aren't as healthy as you might think. Before we talk about what goes into pet food, it's important to talk about the ideal diet for cats and dogs. In general, think about what they would eat out in the wild. You may have heard the terms biologically appropriate or species appropriate diets. That is, diets that are specific to cats and dogs. So cats in particular are obligate carnivores, meaning they need to mostly eat meat. Dogs, on the other hand, are mostly omnivores, but they also need the nutrition that comes from meat. The TLDR is that cats and dogs need meat to both survive and thrive. So most pet food in pet stores actually contains very little quality meat. Just read the first few ingredients in the packaging and you'll know what they're actually eating. If meat, pure meat, isn't listed as the first ingredient, avoid it. So here are five things to look out for and avoid in pet food. Byproduct. Byproduct is slaughterhouse waste. It is the less desirable parts of the animal that aren't intended for human consumption. It includes, but is not limited to, lungs, spleen, kidneys, brain, livers, blood, bone, partially defatted, low temperature fatty tissue, and stomachs and intestines free of their contents. Byproduct does not include hair, horns, teeth, and hooves. So you may be thinking, okay, if a human won't eat it, aren't organs still nutritious for animals? Well, it really depends on what the organ is and the quality of it. So byproduct could include things like tumors or intestines freed of contents, like they were saying earlier, which basically means intestines just without the poop. Can you imagine feeding your animal that? And even though some organs are nutritious, say the liver, a lot of the nutrition is lost due to a process called rendering. This leads us to the next type of food to avoid, which is meal or meat meal. Meal consists of remnants of meat or byproduct cooked, processed under high heat, and dehydrated into a dry, powdery substance that goes into kibble. It's also known as a rendered ingredient. Very actual muscle meat is left, and most of the moisture is gone. So it's possible to have a byproduct meal ingredient. Next, ambiguous animal sources. Avoid anything that doesn't label the animal source. You might see things like meat meal or animal byproduct. Avoid those, because it could mean any of the following roadkill, euthanize animals, including pet and zoo animals. Can you imagine feeding your pet another dead pet, especially with the poison still inside of it? Ugh. Next, fillers. These are low quality ingredients that are added to give more substance to pet food, but they provide less nutrition compared to meat. Examples of fillers include corn, wheat, soy, and rice. Last, preservatives. These are meant to preserve fats and oils from going bad. The main preservatives to avoid are BHA and BHT. These are both carcinogens, meaning they are cancer-causing agents that could be toxic to your pets. So with all this wild information, you might be wondering, why is this allowed to happen? Why is it possible for your pet to have euthanized animals or roadkill show up in their pet food? The truth is, the pet food industry isn't strongly regulated. It is regulated in terms of how food is manufactured and labeled, but AFCO and the FDA do not play a strong role in making sure that the rules are strictly enforced. So here are the roles of AFCO and FDA according to their websites. AFCO themselves says that it does not regulate, test, approve, or certify pet foods in any way. AFCO establishes the nutritional standards for complete and balanced pet food, and it is the pet foods company's responsibility to formulate their products according to the appropriate AFCO standard. So if you see an AFCO approved pet food product, it may not mean much because AFCO hasn't certified that it's met its standards. The FDA. There is no requirement that pet food products have pre-market approval by the FDA. Many ingredients such as meat, poultry, and grains are considered safe and do not require pre-market approval. That means that your pet food may go unchecked by the FDA. 
Not surprisingly, there are actually many defenders of commercial pet food, and they state that byproduct and meal are actually nutritious for pets. These defenders include pet food companies themselves and vets. Pet food companies like Perino will defend byproducts and say that they're actually quite nutritious for pets. Vets will argue against claims that commercial pet foods are processed or junk food, and will even advocate that carbohydrates are quite healthy for pets. The truth is, there is very internal research done by pet food companies on non-commercial diets like raw food. Most vets aren't taught the nutrition that comes from such diets. I am not a veterinarian or a nutritionist, but I've done my own extended research. It is important for you to also do your own research and share your concerns about diet with your veterinarian. Now that I probably scared you with the shocking facts about the pet food industry, you may be wondering, okay, so what should I actually be feeding my pet? Well, join us next time where we'll be discussing the benefits of raw food. Until then, if you have any questions or comments about pet food, feel free to leave a comment. Take care.